Most students like you are able to speak the English language fluently, but are not able to translate it into your exams. I know that panic feeling you have anytime you hear, is it possible to get a grade A in the English language exams? Now, with my se over seven years of experience in teaching students how to study, I've seen so many students struggle. Now, anytime I give them the secrets or how to study and then pass, they realize how easy it is. The reason is very simple. They focus on the wrong things. In this video, I'm going to show you the right framework to think when studying English. Now, this is something that your teacher has been telling you all this while, but you've not seen it from the perspective I'm going to give to you from this video. Now, after watching this video and putting it to work, you are going to be sure of getting your grade A in English. Anytime you hear English language, you'll be so excited and you'll be ready to answer questions and be excited. Now, the exam you write. It's called English language. But don't forget, English can be seen as a language and it can be studied as a subject. Now, in my introduction, you heard I said, you think you can speak English fluently, but you cannot translate it into a good read. If that is what you think, you are thinking of English as a language instead of thinking about it as a subject. When you see English as a language, what you focus on is you speak and you listen. But when you see English as a subject, there are two things you do. And that is what this video seeks to achieve so that you can get your grade A in the English language. Aside that, I'm going to give you secrets to improve these two things. And, you know, my third point is such that if you don't get it right, the first point and second point will not work out. So kindly watch this video to the end. If you want to pass the English language and pass it easily, you have to be a reader. You know, I hear students say that I don't like reading. Reading is not my thing. Anytime I pick a book, I feel sleepy. You know, anytime I hear that, it sounds to me like um, a human being who is saying that I don't like drinking water. You know, you will get to that point where you will be thirsty and it will actually affect your health. Now, if you don't like reading, you're like someone who isn't putting in any effort but is expecting a certain kind of result. You know, generally, things don't work like that. Now, there are those students who read a lot. Now, when I say read, I don't mean to say read your notebook like economics notes, chemistry notes, and government notes. No. Read books on literature. Now, there are a lot of books that have been recommended for various senior high schools. You just don't need to read those books that have been recommended to you um, that you are going to answer in the English objectives. You have to go beyond them. Now, listen, um, when you are reading your notes in the government and then economics, chemistry, the academic requirements for those are to help you pass government, chemistry, and the other electives. But when it comes to the English language, when you are reading, the aim or the focus is to help you build a certain style know how to construct your grammar, build vocabulary, and a whole lot. Now, if you are an ardent reader, you realize that the way you write and even the way you speak changes. You begin to even use vocabulary or words that you actually didn't plan to use. And when you look them up, you realize that, wow, you actually use the right word. Now, you pick them up unconsciously when you do a lot of reading. Now, I'm going to give you some benefits of reading. And the first and most important benefit of reading is it helps you to build your vocabulary. Now, if you pick a word, maybe you want to know the synonym, you want to know the antonym, just the word without picking it in context, it is very difficult to remember. Because remember, I teach that whatever thing you want to learn should be related to something you already know. So when you pick the word, maybe you write 20 words, you want to memorize them, memorize the synonyms and then antonyms. You are most likely to forget them. But when you are reading and you meet a word in a sentence in a novel or poem you are reading now that word has a certain context so let me give you a secret if you want to be able to remember a word you see in a novel or poem you are reading instead of immediately going to look up the word this is what you should do immediately you see the word try to guess the meaning guess the meaning it might be wrong it might be right the next thing you do is now look it up now look it up not just to find a synonym but 
look for the word that fits that context. Now you do this when you are doing when you are answering the WASI comprehension. After getting the word that fits the context, get your dictionary, find the root word of the suffix and then the prefix. You know, when you do this, you realize that most words have or come from the same roots. Now, take note, English language is a language with the richest vocabulary in the whole world. You can do that research for yourself. So reading will make you an expert in finding antonyms, synonyms, and also um, the synonyms in the comprehension and even understanding. It will improve your understanding on what you read in the summary. The second importance of reading is it gives you background knowledge on things you are going to study in other topics. So for example, if you read in a novel about the marriage ceremony of a particular tribe or religion, when you now get to social studies and you are talking about marriage, because you got the background knowledge from the novel you read, it becomes easier and faster for you to grasp what you are now studying in social studies or even other subjects. Another benefit of reading, which is closely related to what I just explained, is it reduces examination anxiety. You know, because you've read different novels from different authors with different perspectives on different subjects, you have a broader scope of knowledge. So you are already confident. You don't fear because you know so much that you can't be asked a question and then you have no idea. You would have an idea about almost everything. The next benefit of reading is it helps you to understand different writing styles. There are times where students read a paragraph and then it goes like, I don't understand. Not because the grammar is too complex or there's too much um, words he or she is not acquainted with. It's just that the writing style of the author is different. So a lot of exposure to different writing styles gives you the advantage. You have the ability to comprehend different writing styles and make meaning of them. Now, as long as you are a student, you have to keep reading. And as I said, read even beyond the literature books you have been given. You know, read even what is not recommended for your school. Why? Because of the benefits I told you about reading. Now, the second thing you need to do if you want to study English as a subject and not as a language is to write. Write as often as you can. Write articles, letters, essays. Let's write the essays. Now, as I said, writing alone is not enough to get you your grade A unless you know the third point I'm going to give. Now, I'm going to mention now some common errors I see amongst students who, you know, I look through their essays and realize a certain common trait about students who always get low grades or low marks in their essays. One common error I see amongst students who always get low marks in their essay is they write very long sentences. And this was me. I could speak the English, write the essay, and then get very low marks. Why? Because I could write a sentence and this sentence is covering like five lines. And you know, the more the examiner or the tutor reads and there are no full stops, he or she is carried away or lost. But because you are the one who wrote it, you can understand and you are not the one going to mark your work. So you have to write it in a way that anyone who reads it can comprehend. So write short sentences. And I can boldly attest to this that when I started writing short sentences, I began to get very good grades in my essays. And most students that I gave this advice saw tremendous change. Now, the second point, each paragraph should contain one idea. Now, every paragraph should communicate just one thing. You know, you might have the points, you can elaborate, you can explain, you can give your perspective on whatever question you were given. But make sure just that one paragraph brings one idea to mind. It shouldn't communicate two things at a go unless you are writing an argumentative essay. And even with that, your point is supposed to be clear. Now, the third error students always make when it comes to writing of essays is they don't know the syntax. When I say syntax, how the particular essay they are writing, the format. They don't know the format. So you're writing a formal letter, you know that your address, the recipient's address, salutation, your heading in uppercase, well underlined. Then you start your first sentence in the first paragraph should immediately communicate to the reader 
while you are writing the letter, immediately, you are not supposed to talk too much about other things that are unnecessary. So just make sure if you are interested in writing letters, you are interested in a speech, argumentative essay, and so on, make sure you have mastered the format very well. Now, reading and then writing cannot help you pass your WASI English examination unless you have someone who is giving you corrective feedback. And that's my third point. You need a tutor to be giving you feedback. Now, listen, as students, we all have this bias to think that we know something, but it is practically impossible to pick yourself from level A, level one to level two. You see, think of when you were at level zero. When I say level zero, I mean when you couldn't speak, when you couldn't walk, when you couldn't communicate. That same ladder that took you from level zero to level one is the same ladder you will need to move from level one to level two, and even an upgraded ladder to move from level one to level two. Now, right from primary straight to your junior high school, you have learned, you have studied, you can speak the English, you can read, you can write. But you can see it's obvious that what you think is actually not translating into your grades. Every student needs a coach, a mentor, to help him or her, not just even in English, but any other subject. Once you realize that you are struggling, you know, you got yourself in the hole. You got yourself in a pit. Now, think of it. You are in a pit. You can't come out. You can't come out unless you have someone who has a higher knowledge, a higher perspective to whatever you are doing. So while you are reading, which, you know, no one can um, supervise you on, but with the writing, which is an output, you can have a tutor who is reading your essays regularly and correcting you. Now, one of the reasons why students don't go to their tutors is because of the kind of feedback. Now, some of the feedback will be positive, which everyone is happy about, and some of them are also negative. Now, I learned a long time ago not to allow negative feedback to get to me. Now, there is this saying that they say that when you are giving lemon, convert it into a lemonade. Now, in our perspective here, one of the vegetables that you wouldn't want to consume alone is pepper. Now, in my part of the world, when you are giving a pepper, I'll say use it to prepare soup. Yes, that's what you need to do because um, the only way you can move to the next level is to get someone who can pick you up and take you there. You know, a lot of people are stuck, not just even in English, but in other subjects and in other areas of life because they have chosen not to see that someone is supposed to pick me up. And I can assure you, anyone you see improving, an athlete, a student who keeps doing better and improving each and every time has a coach. Now, feedback is not needed by only students who are not doing well. Even if you are the one who is getting all the A's every time, I want you to take that bold step. Go to your tutor, your lecturer, whoever is teaching you. Ask him or her, what can I do to improve? Now, when you stop growing, <laughs> you start dying. So you can become better no matter how perfect you think you are. You don't just need a grade A in English. You need eight A's in all the subjects you are writing as a WASI candidate. So can you watch the video floating on the screen to see how you can get eight A's? Like, comment, subscribe and share to your friends to also know how to get a grade A in English.